and hello and here's a review of some of the topics that we can expect to see in our first unit of study in calc but these are algebra topics so let's take a look at some of the ideas here and first up for bids is the idea of factoring and I'm, I'm sure most people are pretty comfortable with this uh, it's the idea that you take two numbers that multiply to this last term and somehow some way add up to the one in the middle and for this particular example number one in the upper left hand corner here uh, multiply to seven but add to eight so that's got to be b plus one and b plus seven and factoring not so bad so give the others a shot that are on this page All right, now the real interesting part comes when the leading coefficient isn't 1, and, and students get really challenged by this in a hurry. So one foolproof method that could be used here, assuming that the quadratic factors is a grouping method that you could use. So to do the grouping method, you want to take this first number that's attached to the squared term and multiply it by the constant number out here. So 3 times negative 5 would give you negative 15. And now you're going to do the same thing you did before. You're going to look for two numbers that multiply to negative 15 that somehow, some way add to this number in the middle of negative 2. In this case, those numbers would be negative 5 and positive 3. Well, <laughs> lucky how it worked out that way. Now, what you're going to do next is split this middle term based on those two numbers. So we're going to rewrite it as negative 5p plus 3p. So what we're going to do is, it, it seems like we're going to make this more complicated by bringing in an extra term here, but I, I think you're going to find it's not too bad because the grouping method now calls for you to find a greatest common factor of the first pair of terms and also of the second pair of terms. So if I look at the greatest common factor of 3p squared and negative 5p, I'm probably looking at just simply a factor of p. And for this other one, this other pair, the 3p and the negative 5, the greatest common factor is just 1. So we're going to sort of pseudo factor out a 1 here. Now, here's the exciting part. The exciting part, the big action step of grouping method, involves the 3p minus 5 now being a common factor. So we're going to factor that out as well. And anything that was in front of the 3p minus 5, that makes the new group. So 3p minus 5 and p plus 1 that should get you your factoring. So give it a shot with the second one here. Okay, now sum and difference of cubes is uh, a rather unique one. This is one that doesn't get a whole lot of airplay. Uh, it's just best if I go ahead and give you the formula itself. And the sum of cubes formula is when you have something being raised to the third power plus another something being raised to the third power. And once you identify those somethings, then you're going to just drop it into this formula, a plus b, and then a squared minus ab plus b squared. Okay. And for the difference of cubes, it's if you're subtracting two things that are being raised to the third power. So it's a minus b, and then a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, these trinomials here, these two right here, they won't factor any further. You have to trust me on this. So if I wanted to look at this first example on the left here, x cubed plus 27, it's like my a is x and my b is 3 because 3 cubed is 27 and x to the third power is just x cubed. So what we are dealing with here is x plus 3 and then x squared minus 3x plus 3 squared, which is 9. And that's the factoring on that one. And again, you can try to factor this further, but you're just going to end up in heartbreak and misery. Two things I do not wish on anybody. Okay, so for number 12, I'm going to come down here because that's the only difference one. I just want to demonstrate that real fast. 
I'm first of all going to rewrite it as 125 minus 27 u to the third. So that's going to make my a in the formula 5, because 5 cubed is 125. And my b in the formula will be, well, I don't need a negative sign there, it's just going to be 3u. So plugging it in to the difference of cubes formula up here, we're just going to get 5 minus 3u, and then 25 minus 15u plus 9u squared or plus 8, plus 15u, sorry about that. And that's the factoring for a difference of two cubes. Okay? Try the others on your own and see how you do. Ah, the dreaded polynomial and synthetic division. So let's review the polynomial long division first. And this is the one that you really didn't like too much in Algebra 2 and probably didn't like it even anymore in pre-calculus. And it's going to be m squared minus 7m minus 11. We'll take the divisor, m minus 8, put that on the outside. And now I need to find something that multiplies my m to make it look exactly like m squared. And that thing is obviously just going to be an m. So you distribute this through those two things right here. So m times m will bring us m squared, line that up underneath, and then m and negative 8, well that's negative 8m, and one of the key things at this point, if you remember from 5th grade division, is to go ahead and subtract. So when we subtract, that forces a sign change on each and every one of those terms. Okay, so the m squareds cancel, and there's your m, drop the next term and let's do it all again and in this case the thing that I multiply by is going to be 1 because you want to multiply this by something to make it look exactly like your leading term down here so that's going to give me m minus 8 and then here comes the sign change and that's going to leave us with a remainder of negative 3 Okay, so you can write your answer as the quotient, which is all the way up here, this m plus 1. And then we're going to write this as plus negative 3 over the divisor of m minus 8. And when you put that together, that's your answer. Now, some people might say that your remainder is negative 3 is part of the answer. It really either way works, but we, we kind of prefer the more specific uh, use of the, of the m minus 8 there. Okay, so a quick review of our process in polyno or synthetic division, rather. The first thing you do is take your divide dividend, the thing that you're dividing, and you make a row of coefficients. Okay, so the 1 multiplies n squared, the negative 1 multiplies the n term, and then there's the negative 29. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is take this number or the opposite of this negative 6, which is positive 6. And I'm going to put it into a box over here. And in order to go through the synthetic, you go ahead and drop the first term straight down, and then multiply by this 6 out here in the box, and put that right there. And then add those two together to get 5, and then multiply by 6, and then we do it again and that's going to leave you 1. Okay, now here's how you read the quotient. Think about this. When you divide an n squared by an n, you're going to get just 1 power of n. So that's going to make the quotient n plus 5, because you kind of go in degree descending order here. And this guy over here is your remainder. If this guy was 0, you were really happy when you were hunting for zeros back in pre-calculus and Algebra 2. But it's not in this case. So, all right. On the other two, I'd recommend that you try each of those once. All right. So let's take a look at one example of conjugates here. And when it comes to conjugates, you want to get rid of the radical that's in the denominator. It seems like a pretty antiquated practice here. So, the conjugate, if you remember, is going to be 
in this case, just the same thing as your denominator with the radical. And we are going to change that to a minus sign. So the conjugate is 4 minus 4 root 5. And in order to keep this uh, looking good, you have to multiply top and bottom by that conjugate. Okay, now I want you to just ignore this for a moment and focus in on this right here. That term that we added in really has a value of 1. So we're not changing the expression any, we're just changing how it's written. And unfortunately this is going to call for a whole mess of foil. And let's go ahead and see if we can come up with um, what it's going to work out to be here. So 3 times 4 is 12, and then that's going to be 12 roots of 5 when you distribute the 3. Okay, so 4 and 4 multiplied together for 16. And when you multiply a conjugate, something magical happens here. The outers and inners are going to disappear completely. So then you're, sorry, you're going to have to multiply... Uh, the uh, the outer or the last terms, which is going to be four times negative four, that's negative sixteen, and then root five times root five is just going to be a five, and now we start the process of cleaning this up, and it's going to get pretty ugly here, I'm afraid. And probably the best we can do here is to just divide by maybe a 4. That's really the best we can do. Common factor of 4. That's about as far as you could or should want to take that, because you've reached your goal of getting the thing out of the denominator. Alright, now the last thing I want to look at here is LCDs, and I think you're going to find that these aren't so bad either. Uh, they're just a little messy. So to find an LCD, you want to make sure everything's factored first. So in this first example, we have 6x over 3. Okay, I know what you're going to say. Mr. Winner, why are you not reducing that? Well, because I want to use an LCD here to combine this down into one fraction. That's why. If I factor out a 3, I get 5x plus 1. So the LCD comes from having all of the parts of the denominator that are common to at least each one of the expressions. So the LCD here is going to be 3 times 5x plus 1. That means that the only thing that this is missing is the 5x plus 1. So I multiply the top and the bottom. Oops. Get the right tool here by 5x plus 1 and 5x plus 1. Now you don't really want to distribute that in the downstairs because, because you want to keep that common denominator. You want to be able to see what you're doing here. The math can sometimes be a very visual thing. Okay. So now that they have the same denominator, I can go about the process of adding them together. I guess I'm going to need to do a distributive property first. And then now I can just add the numerators, and since they're already unlike terms, this shouldn't be... Uh, too much of an issue. If I had like terms, I'd just have to pay attention to the signs. And that, folks, is our little quick tutorial on some of the things that are related to what we will use in the first unit. And I spoke too soon because one last thing that we've got to watch out for are these rules of exponents. And, and I'm sure we've seen them all before but it's good to remember how they work, especially uh, in the context of variables and different numbers. And sometimes we use these to kind of sneak around some stuff. So let's go ahead and try these ideas here. Uh, you know, if I had x to the third times x to the fourth, that of course would be x to the seventh. 
If I had y to the eighth over y to the fourth, that would just be y to the fourth. You use the subtraction or division rule there. Uh, if it's power to power, z cubed raised to the fifth power, that would give z to the fifteenth. You multiply it out. So the, these three right here could probably, uh, you know, remember the mad spam acronym. So multiply, add, divide, subtract, power, multiply. Now these power of a product and power of a fraction, those are really important to remember because they kind of pop up when you least expect it. So if I had uh, 3x raised to the fourth power, then it's almost as though I'm going to distribute that exponent. So 3 to the fourth being 81, and then x to the fourth. Or if I had y over 5 to the third power, y cubed over 125. That's how that works. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Okay. Three more down at the bottom there of note, zero exponent, anything except zero that you raise to the zero power is one. Uh, anything that you raise to a negative exponent, uh, cross the line, change the sign, sure you've heard that before. And then fractional exponents, uh, the uh, denominator of your fractional exponent becomes the index of your radical, and the numerator becomes your power inside. So, and, and you want to keep in mind that you could do these in either order when you're evaluating. So, for example, if, if, if I asked you to do like 4 to the 3 halves power, that's the same thing as saying the square root of 4 cubed. Okay, now you could do this in either order. I could do the 4 cubed first, get 64, take the square root, it's 8. Or, I could take the square root of 4 first, that's 2, cube it off, that's 8. So either way you get the same answer. Alright, quick review of the algebra concepts here. Enjoy and good luck.